Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to talk you through the basic thought processes which are vital to understanding the engine. First and foremost, Godot is a visual editor. Uh, what this means is that most of the development is done in this area. Uh, it's done using the mouse to graphically manipulate the on-screen elements, which will more or less appear in-game as they appear in the editor. Um, so you, you can see the UI here, it's pretty cool. I'll explain each of these areas uh, in this video, but let's before we do that, let's start with one of the most important concepts in Godot, which is uh, nodes. If you've used a visual editor such as Unity before, the concept of nodes shouldn't be too foreign. Nodes make up the basis of your entire workflow in Godot. They can sort of be compared to ingredients in a meal. Where a soup might contain broth and carrots, a game in Godot might contain sprites and physics bodies. Uh, furthermore, nodes in Godot are organized in a kind of tree structure. You have one tree root node, and then several other nodes which branch off of that. Uh, right now I have an empty scene, I have no tree root, so if I try to save, this operation can't be done without a tree root. This is what I'm talking about. In order to add a tree root node, you can navigate to the scene tab here and select the plus button, or press Control A. This will open a dialog box and there's about a billion nodes to choose from. So, you don't need most of these yet, so don't be too intimidated. Uh, you might already notice that they are already organized in a tree structure. So certain nodes can be expanded to reveal even more nodes. This is to do with inheritance. Um, for example, canvas item is the base class for generic node which draws to the screen. Inside canvas item you can see there are these two, control and node 2D. Control is for the UI options, so things like uh, you know, text labels, um, pop-ups, buttons, etc. It's, it's the UI stuff. Node 2D is for the you know 2D uh, objects which are drawn to the screen, so there's stuff like uh, sprites, particles, canvas modulating, uh, light, all that sort of stuff. So things which don't draw to, draw to the screen like you know sample player which does sound or the resource preloader which preloads resources, uh, these are not children of canvas item. <clears throat> So for now, let's uh, add a node of type node as our tree node, or our tree root. You do this by selecting node at the top of the list, and either double-clicking it or selecting create at the bottom right. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's click create. Hopefully, as has happened here, a node named node should appear as our tree root in the scene tab. Scene tab keeps track of all of our nodes. It lists them as a tree structure similar to the create new node dialog here, um, except this structure can be adjusted based on how you want to organize your nodes. So we'll, we'll come back with what we can do with this node in the next tutorial. Uh, for now let's look at the inspector tab just below. So here you can see that node has two properties. It has pause mode and script. Don't worry too much about pause node, uh, pause mode because this stuff isn't that important. Script is where it really gets interesting. Uh, the script property uh, allows you to attach scripts to um, extend code-based functionality to our node. Uh, again, this is something that we'll cover in a different video because that's outside the scope of this one. So this is the file system tab. This allows us to see the uh, file structure of our project clearly. It's not very complicated, and they, there isn't actually that much that needs explaining. One thing to note is that the root folder of your project is referred to by Godot as, well, res, or res. Uh, this stands for resource. It's used as the reference point for Godot to access all of your images, sounds, and other fancy things you might want to put into your game. So this top section only shows you the folders in your project. If you want to see what is contained in each folder, uh, you can select the folder and it shows the contents down here. By default, Godot's mascot, uh, well, an icon of Godot's mascot is in this root folder, uh, and it's named icon.png. Finally, let's take a look at the top bar here. This isn't particularly complicated, but it is worth referencing just for the sake of completeness. So you can see scene is the equivalent of file in a word processor. It allows you to save scenes, open scenes, quit the editor entirely, or change project settings, and this will come, on, come in quite handy later on. 
Um, import allows you to import resources and files from outside of your project folder. Um, or to convert things such as .ttf fonts uh, into something that Godot can understand. You can see like .fnt, bitmap fonts. Tools right now isn't that useful. Um, you know. Uh, export does basically what it says on the tin. It'll export your game to Linux, Mac, Windows, a little bit more experimentally HTML5, or very experimentally Android and Blackberry. Um, so he had these options, these four options, 2D, 3D, script, and asset lib. 2D is the 2D view here. If I select 3D, I get this 3D view. Uh, you can hold the middle mouse button to pan around in the um, 3D view, like this, or you can scroll to zoom in and out. There's script view, which, if we had a script, I'll create a script just now. Um, so you can see this is the script view. Little script here, which you can edit. Asset lib. Um, this is all, these are use community submitted uh, assets, which we could download. But um, it can be a bit of a pain to make them work, so I'm not going to uh, cover this, especially not in this video. So in the center, these are the buttons to play your game. This one plays the project from the um, primary scene. So if we select this, main scene, no main scene has been defined. So this plays from the main scene, which might be your main menu, for instance. Um, this plays the current scene that you're viewing. Um, this would shut down your game if it's running. Um, okay. On the right here, there's settings. Now, this allows you to access the editor settings or the editor layout or install export templates, but don't worry about that. Editor settings is all this useful stuff you can use to um, edit the uh, script editor, for instance, or you know, the uh, scene tree editor. All this good stuff, uh, which you know gives you a bit of more, a bit more customization um, than you might otherwise. And uh, that's about it for this tutorial, since I don't really want to overload you with information. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part two, which I'm planning on making on the topic of nodes. So the reason I decided to make these tutorials is because Godot's available tutorials really aren't good enough. The popular games from scratch tutorials for Godot are poorly written, poorly paced, and show up very poor use of the engine. Also, I genuinely want to see this engine succeed, and getting more people to use it and understand how to use it can only mean good things for its future. Also, it's free publicity, so I'm not going to complain.